Hey everyone, Bobby Watts here bringing you another episode of Smack Talk RC. This time we're a little bit late, but better late than ever. So this episode 28, this time we're going over precision and technical flying. We brought a friend in for this episode. Uh, we brought Kyle Dahl in for this episode. Um, we were hanging out in Rochester, New York at uh, Mr. Stacy's Fun Fly. Uh, had an absolute blast up there and uh, Kyle was there and he hung out with us and he stuck around and showed us a few things and did a few flights for us. Um, he is one of the most, I would say right now, one of the top precise and technical pilots around today. Um, he does all sorts of crazy uh, different maneuvers, wh whatever he does forwards, he can do backwards, he can do inside out, he can do left rudder, right rudder. And so we felt, felt like there's been a little bit of lack of that in Smack Talk the whole series. So this time we're bringing you precision and technical flying. So Kyle's going to get into um, a few flights with us. He did two flights for us. Uh, he's going to go over one of the 3D Masters maneuvers, and then he came up with uh, five other maneuvers that he's going to show you guys. Um, everything from pirouetting sort of things to different sort of loops and rolls sort of thing. So it, it's really, really cool. So we'll check that out. Also, an interview with him. He's a great guy. Uh, so yeah, that, that's really cool stuff there. And then I'm gonna show you guys some other things. Um, maybe not quite as precise and as technical as what he's doing, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit of how to make thing, how to make simple flying more technical. So we'll just look at even just straight and level forward flying, loops and rolls, uh, maybe TikToks and stuff, different ways to uh, invert them or vary them a little bit and just to make them precise, what we kind of look at, um, kind of how that ties into competition flying, that sort of stuff. Then we're gonna look at, I guess, a, like a little bit of a comparison or a history with the technical flying. It's crazy, the stuff that we're doing now. I mean, especially in the last two, three years compared to the stuff we've been doing years and years and years ago. So we're gonna take a look at that and then we're just gonna look at how to tie it all together, how to just put precise flying with smack flying and you know, really take a look at how we're gonna put everything together. So we're not quite doing FAI, we're not quite doing smack, we just wanna keep everything really nice and technical and stuff. So I think it'll be a good episode. We haven't really done this stuff yet. So, and the stuff with Kyle, it, the stuff he's doing just absolutely boggles my mind. So let's get into it. Episode 28, here we go. All right, before we get into the flying part of the episode, like always, we try to give you guys a little bit of like a history lesson, where all this stuff came from, because it didn't just pop up yesterday. So if we're gonna talk about precise and technical flying, I guess it might've started just around, I guess FAI really started it. Um, because in the early days of 3D, at least what I was introduced to, um, when I got into 3D, the stuff down south, uh, with the guys from Atlanta, the guys from South Carolina and stuff, it was a really a lot about like the smackdown and like really excited flying and this high off the ground and stuff and there wasn't really too much thought given to precision and technical flying but meanwhile we've had the guys who do the FAI stuff we have the guys who do the F3C stuff they've been doing their gig for a long time in terms of um, big long uh, just just huge maneuvers taking up lots of sky um, and then competitions so they have their big maneuvers they have the precise hovering staying in one spot symmetry positioning um, all that sort of stuff how stable the model looks so I guess it hasn't been really 
really until I guess the the early 2000s when it kind of got combined um, to where they wanted to look for everything. They wanted to look for in the competition, so like 3D Masters and an XFC. I'd say it's the two biggest competitions. They wanted to look for like that nice. They wanted to split the middle. They wanted to get that 3D look and they wanted to get the F3C FAI look. So I guess in the early 2000s they really started uh, putting it together. So if guys are doing TikToks, they do a TikTok back to back to a uh, to a big loop or a rolling circle or a rolling rainbow sort of deal. But the flying's come a long way in that time. So what we've got now, like I said earlier, it's just unbelievable this type of stuff that we're doing. Um, the biggest thing that has greatly, greatly improved that is fly barless technology. The fly barless stuff now lets us get away with so much. It's unbelievable. Um, so if we take a look at maybe uh, early 2000s, um, what not, 3D Masters, the highest K maneuvers within the first few years were, uh, so the, the, the maneuvers that you get the most points for, were some basic maneuvers now. I bet you most of them can do them now. Uh, like a TikTok, or like a four point TikTok, or a sustained pirouetting flip, or a pirouetting loop, or even a big bend. I guess that's about the hardest. Maybe 2004, 2005, those were the hardest maneuvers. Now they've got uh, one of the hardest maneuver is a uh, reverse pirouetting uh, uh, reverse pirouetting globe or a pirouetting um, so the big bend the uh, 12 point tick tock and then you have to do it skids in and rotate so they're really trying to figure out how to stump us how to stump all the pilots they're really trying to figure out how to get everything just more and more and more difficult so as we take a look at that we want to take a look at the precision stuff you know guys back in the day Curtis Youngblood Scott Gray, Jason Krause, when they were competing at 3D Masters, they were still looking at the same sort of precise stuff. And that hasn't gone away, the same sort of thing that we're looking at. It really hasn't gone away. And so we're just trying to show you guys maybe what to pay attention to throughout some flying. You know, the top guys who are competing, the guys who are placing in the top five in every contest, they're doing the same sort of thing. It's, it, it's all some really, really, really cool stuff. So the stuff we're getting away with now is just unbelievable with the flubberless technology and electrics too. The electric tricks are just so overpowered now you can get away with whatever you want to do in the air so that's really it that's how everything started so let's get into some flying first I just want to show you guys how to uh, how to get into the flying with just maybe taking some simple things and just looking at them from a technical and a precise sort of a uh, manner we're just gonna look at symmetry once again positioning once again we've done this before we're just gonna go over it and then maybe how to take something and really really break it down and make it precise and more technical than we would normally do in a normal maneuver so let's get into that I'm gonna fire up my X7 here and we'll uh, we'll get it going All right guys, so now we're gonna get into the episode with the first flight here. This one is gonna be pretty much for everybody. Um, what we wanna do here is we're gonna just show how to take uh, simple maneuvers and look at them from a precise and from a technical point of view. So let's just say we do a roll, right? We wanna keep it centered, we wanna keep it the same altitude. So we're gonna look at everything from that point of view. And then we're just gonna look at maneuvers just in a different way. So let's just try to do everything different, right? So the best way to make things different is to simply change the shape of it so let's say you do a uh, let's say you do a loop normally right as a circle right let's change the shape of it let's see if we can do just basic shapes squares triangles stars um, ovals so that sort of thing so let's get the x7 fired up here and uh, we're gonna get into that here so <clears throat> here we go so I might just do a low head speed or high head speed I haven't really decided yet so let's just take a look for instance Oh, we'll do the higher head speed. Let's just take a look at like a, a simple roll, right? If I do a roll, I keep it, you know, maybe eye level, eye level. I do a roll, I'm inverted, and right side up. Notice it was perfectly symmetrical. I was completely upside down, right when I crossed my center line, that sort of thing. So once again, you know, I, I can take different maneuvers and make them technical like this. So let's say I do backwards, right? I can do two rolls. One, perfectly centered, two perfectly centered. We can look at a lot of things like this. Just a simple TikTok. I can do a TikTok and then a roll and then continue to TikTok right at my center. So that's how we're going to take really basic maneuvers and just take take a look at them from a precise and from a technical point of view. So let's take a look at even something extreme like a wall. 
So I'm just gonna stop right in front of us. And it's gonna be perfectly in front of us. And then exit. So different things like that, if you're gonna do them, try to make them the same altitude, same everything. Even if we're just doing, let's just say it's a backwards inverted down the runway, right? I'm gonna keep the tail perfectly away from us, not sideways like this, but just like this. Same altitude, straight line, nice and down, straight and parallel to the field. So that's how we're really gonna make our just normal flying look precise. So let's say if I do a stall turn, I can come up, I can do, you know, maybe a pirouette this way, a pirouette that way, and rotate back. So that's how we're gonna make our flying look nice and predictable and like we meant to do everything. So if I do a flip here, I'll come and do a backwards flip here. That type of thing, if you do uh, one, two, three rolls this way, and come back, one, two, three rolls that way. Same height, same heading, same everything. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at how to take our other basic maneuvers and change it. So let's just do a loop. You guys have all seen a loop before. So we're just gonna come in, nice, gentle loop. Notice I entered and I exited at the same height, okay? Now, let's take the loop and let's just change it a little bit. Instead of just a boring loop, you know, for instance, Matt Bodos came up with the diamond loop years ago, and it's so cool because it's just a variation on a loop. So instead of making a loop a circle, we're gonna make it in a diamond formation. So let's take a look. One, two, three, four. We can do it backwards too. One, two, three, four. So we just took a simple maneuver, changed the shape of it, and it's something completely different. We can do that, that now, we can do that like pirouetting. You know, so we can do all these sorts of things in a different shape. So let's say we could even take that, start upright and then invert it and maybe try a triangle. One, two, three. I'm not quite centered, but like one, two, three. So that sort of thing. We can do them uh, away from us. One, two, three, four. So just that sort of thing. Um, another thing that I saw at XFC that was really cool, one of the guys was doing it. Instead of just like a regular funnel, right? So let's just say we'll stay in a, in a oval, right? In a circle, right? Let's arc it and we can just arc our maneuver. So we'll go up. So we'll go up and then we come down. We come up and then we come down. Once again, our centering, our positioning, our symmetry is also very important here. Lastly, we'll do an auto, right? Let's be precise and we'll be technical. Just a regular right side up auto. And we're gonna land straight in front of us. We'll land on the grass. Just straight in front of us. So that sort of thing. So that's a way that we can just take our normal flying, just our everyday flying, and just approach it from the precise and technical point of view. And it looks cleaner. Everything looks just a lot better and a lot more, you know, like you meant to do it. So enough of this. Let's get going to Kyle's flights. Kyle's going to show us some really, really, really cool maneuvers. But first, let's get to know him. He's a really funny dude. Uh, so do an interview and then some flying with him. So let's do it. So hey guys, how you doing? We have our guest for the episode here, Mr. Kyle Dahl. How you doing? I'm doing good. Out here at the Rochester event, having a good time. Now, the first most important question I want to ask you is, what's up with your t-shirt? Well, I was walking around JC Penney's and <laughs> there was this shirt. There's a, like, there's a whole rack, like $5 a shirt. And I was like, hey, that's got SpongeBob on it. And it says swag. So I figured it was pretty swag. I don't know what that mean. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but so it's good. It's good. Yeah, I like it. I really like it because he's on the phone. This is like a T-Rex sort of teacher. Anyway, uh, so this is Kyle Dahl. He's the winner of the 3D Masters this year, and you've gotten, you've won XFC. You, you've placed really well in all sorts of competitions, right? Yeah, for the last four years, I've been competing, and I think been in the top four every, every time. So. Nice. 
That's, that's, I'd say that's pretty legit. So what we're trying to do this episode is talk to you guys about technical maneuvers. Um, I think Kyle's probably one of the best out of any of the pilots out there, and where you can uh, mix like extreme radical 3D and with really precise technical flying. Yeah, that's what I try and do for my style. Is that exact thing? That's cool. So he's incredibly good at uh, whatever he can do. Forwards he does backwards, sideways he can do upside down sideways, left rudder he can do right rudder. So what we're going to do is we're going to chat with him uh, and try to figure out a little bit more about you know how to learn that stuff, how to break it down, you know? Yeah, should be able to help with that. Alright, cool. So when you first, when you started flying, did you want to do, like when you first started flying we were talking about you had like an extreme and stuff. Were you doing, even when you were first learning, were you doing a bunch of technical stuff with different rudder and, and that sort of thing? I mostly, I started out with just precision, because my dad, like my first loop that I did, right, it, was, it wasn't very pretty, it was kind of like a yeah, weird yeah, yeah. tumble, but my dad, the first thing he says is that wasn't round, <laughs> so I'm just like, but whatever, so my dad always pushed me to be precise, and then that just led to the technical things, when I, everything I learned to the left rudder, I learned with right rudder, inverted, right side up, backwards, forwards. So you learn that immediately. So for instance, when you started doing stationary pirouettes or pirouetting flips or something like that, would you do it left rudder and right rudder right when you were beginning? Yeah, really? both. Yeah. See, I did that at the field. I went left rudder and right rudder. One of the guys at the field was like, no, nah, don't do that. It'll hurt your tail servo. It's all his fault because I can't do right rudder to save my life. <laughs> I've noticed. Damn. <laughs> well, he said he's going to teach me, but after that, I don't even want to learn now. So anyway, so we're doing that. Okay, so you got that going, and then I feel like the fly bar list really helps with learning precise sort of stuff. Yeah? The fly bar list, if you have a, like I've noticed with the V bar, it's got the great pure comp and everything, that it really helps uh, just to, with that. To help, it makes you, it, it's, sorry, <laughs> it's easier to be precise yeah. and everything, so it really does help, I think. And how long were you flying fly bar or fly bar list? I've been, I first, last time I flew a fly bar was like four years ago, and, okay, yeah. and I started five years ago, so I spent about a year with a fly bar versus four years fly bar lists. Nice. So I think that that's one of the main, and I think the people learning now, so like you guys learning now, I would recommend fly bar lists right off the bat, because it, it lear going from a fly bar to fly bar list inherently takes like a year to learn. Yeah, it's, fly bars are basically a thing of the past in my opinion, so... I Agreed. say just go fly barless. It's so much more precise and smooth, and they just the machines fly truer and everything. So now with the fly barless, do you feel like you can get the stuff on the deck? Like if you had to do like a Turek style sort of on the deck, crazy in your face, do you feel like you could pull that off with a fly barless? Yeah, if you set it up right. That's another key thing. Is just would set that up. Would be different than well, that big. What would that be different than your normal setup? Yeah. Like with the V-Bar, I would use paddle sim. Oh, yeah. Put like 40 of that in there, and then it would feel like a fly barless. And I know... Like for, a fly bar. Yeah, like fly bar, sorry. And I know for a while, Tarek was running V-Bar and his stuff. Oh, nice. And he, he asked me for help, setup tips, and <laughs> I told him to do all that, and he was very happy with it. So if Tarek likes it, I think anyone would like it, for Smack at least. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. All right, cool. Well, now that you've met this kid, he's actually a funny guy. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, 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 because people don't get to see the side of the RC pilots. They can see us do dime, demos and stuff, and your t-shirt is spot on today. Spot on. As you see, I have my very serious t-shirt on, too. I like this. For Master Rick. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, Master Rick is in Rick We Trust. It is a Smack Talk t-shirt, If in case you guys didn't know. Learning the ways with Master Rick. So, anyway, so we talked to this guy a little bit. So, let's get into flying. We're going to have him do a bunch of different sort of flying styles and stuff. And he's teaching us stuff, too, because Bert and I are old. Bert's always busy with work, like testing and stuff. And I'm always doing things as well. So we're going to learn some really cool stuff. Uh, I think first what we're going to get into now is we're just going to do simple sort of maneuvers and make them technical. Yep. And we're also going to look at how to take a simple maneuver and look at it from a technical point of view in terms of altitude, position, symmetry, all that sort of thing. So, 3D masters, maybe? And 3D ma masters. Do you want to do them? Yeah. I think it would be a good exercise. Yeah. He'll be able to, yeah. He'll, he'll do them perfectly. All right. Let's get into it. Alright guys, we're going to take you through some technical maneuvers here. 
I'm gonna do a maneuver I call tight parallel funneling parallel funnel. We're gonna go into the, then gonna go into some rolling loops and then finish it off with a maneuver I call like the half star or something. I don't have names for all these, but they're all pretty cool maneuvers. So here's the first maneuver. As you can, That was a tight parallel funneling parallel funnel. Next we'll go on into rolling loops. And then lastly, I call it a half star. Alright, so those are the three maneuvers we're going to cover this flight. Now I'm going to go through slowly and break them all down so you guys can uh, hopefully try and understand them. So the first move, what you want to start with is just your regular pyro funnel. And then what you want to do is start wrapping it up and make it smaller. So you get tighter and tighter in diameter and then until you're finally doing them stationary. Once you've mastered this, you can start trying to work it around um, so you push here to get it to go to the side. And then you can push here to get it going out. And then push, and then that takes you on around the circle. You just keep pushing, hold it there, push and hold it, get it around, push. So that's the basic maneuver. The, in concept, it's pretty easy. It's just practicing and the execution of it that makes it very technical and difficult. Things on the precision side of this is you want to keep your pirouette rate the same. You don't want to be pirouetting really fast and then slow it down and then pirouette fast. Another thing, you don't want to change altitude. You don't want to like come up and go down. You want to try and maintain a nice constant pirouette constant altitude and then that will uh, provide a nice technical and precise maneuver. The next one's the rolling loops. Going to a little higher head speed. This one you gotta it takes a lot of collective management to do and just a lot of timing between the cyclic stick and the collective. So the main thing to do is just start by rolling slowly. You can come in get some speed you know, push it up, roll, push it up, roll, push it over, kind of break it down into steps while you're first learning the maneuver. I found that's an easy way to learn it. And then when you go, so you just got to give collective and roll, come out of it, collective, roll, come out of it, and just continue on down the maneuver. You know. And then after you get that um, process down, you can just start not pausing on the rolls and just pushing, pu pulling, pushing, pulling, and then that's the, that's the maneuver basically. It's just another, a lot of practice things. Um, the, tech, or the precision side of this is obviously you want a, your diameter of the loop to be the same all the way around. You don't want it to be flat topped or really wide or anything. Another thing you want to watch is your displacement. You don't want to start close in and then work the maneuver out. As you can see I'm doing here. That's no good. Okay, rolling into our last maneuver for this flight is the half star. It's pretty basic in concept. It's just another execution thing. You start with just a rainbow and then the next rainbow goes out on a 45 degree angle. So as you can see on the sticks, I'm going to push in the top left corner and give negative push, which pushes it out diagonally. Now to come back, it's going to be back right stick and positive pitch. Next is just aileron, left aileron, right aileron. Now here I'm going to start in the bottom left hand corner. So push, now it's going to go to the top right. And then elevator, obviously. 
So that maneuver, yeah, just watch your altitudes, try and make the lengths of the stars all the same length. Now for different variations of some of these, the, the, pure, the pure funneling pure funnel, you can do things, you know, pirouette and then reverse it. That's, this is a very technical thing to do, but it, uh, it's really a difficult, but it's a fun, challenging maneuver. For the pirouette loops, some things you can work on is pirouette, or uh, sorry, rolling eights, where you roll it around and you actually come down on center, and then go back up the other side. So, and you can also do that maneuver backwards and forwards. And then the last maneuver, you can do a whole bunch of different variations. You can do it pirouetting. Go out on the 45. You can reverse the pirouette direction on each leg. These are all things that just up the technicality of the maneuver. You can also do maybe a little tumble on the thing. Go out on the 45 with the tumble. So you just bring that all the way around. So. That concludes the lesson for this flight. Just go a little fun. Go up, maybe do a technical auto. It's my one of my favorite autos is a flipping. And that's that. See you next flight. So now it's come the time in the episode where we want to really get technical with our technical flying explanation. What do I mean by that? These things, set maneuvers, if you guys haven't heard of them um, in any sort of RC helicopter competition, uh, I'm pretty sure every single one has something like this. Um, they like to put in what are called set maneuvers or required maneuvers. Uh, this is a way for judges to get a good look at all of the pilots at them doing the same exact maneuver. Um, some competitions like the one for instance at Urcha, sometimes they choose really easy set maneuvers like a top hat where you go straight up, you flatten out and come back down. Just really simple. Sometimes the most simple set maneuvers are the easiest to judge like a perfect loop or a, a I don't know, a pirouetting loop or something. Sometimes those are really easy to judge. But Recently, I guess the, the most popular set maneuvers, I think, is probably the sets that uh, 3DX puts together for all their 3DX competitions and most notably 3D Masters. Uh, for 3D Masters, there's a, huge, uh, there's a huge amount of set maneuvers that one can do, ranging in different K values, which is how hard a maneuver is to do. So if a maneuver gets a K value of 3, that's really hard to do. But I think they go down to 1 or 1.5. Um, and then there's everything in between two, two and a half. So I just want to explain a little bit about the 3D Masters maneuvers from this year and the XFC maneuvers from this year. Kind of show you how they differentiate, what the judges look at, and different things like that. So let's get into it. So the 3D Masters, uh, you got your helicopter here, which is just a little coaxial thing. Uh, I'm just going to go over the top uh, K3 maneuvers. This is the best of the best. Most of the guys in the master's class are probably going to do this. Uh, maybe some of the guys in the expert class will do this. But I'm going to explain them to you. I'm not really going to fly them because you can see the videos from 3DX. just want to explain kind of how a judge would look at it or if you're practicing how you would look at a maneuver like this. So let's start. So the first one is called the time machine. So we're going to do all the maneuvers as if you are the pilot. So the time machine begins as a 12 point tick tock. So you can see here my disc is into you. Um, now I believe it starts with like a nose in sort of hover or whatever, but it's a 12 point tick tock. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, and then all the way back around to 12. And then when they get to the uh, nose up position, they do a half roll and then they do it skids in. And I believe they use right rider the whole time. And then when they're done, they do another roll, back to probably nose in, and then that's their complete maneuver. So the judges are looking at a few different things. They're looking at 
The clock points, they want those to be exactly straight on. So 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. They wanna see your uh, successive clock movements perfectly. Next thing they wanna see is, especially if it's a tick-tock maneuver straight on, they wanna see that disc. If you're here, when you rotate, they want the main shaft to be in the exact same spot the whole time. They don't wanna see you move left and right or up and down. Uh, the next thing is just a consistent altitude. They don't wanna see it drop. Um, different things like that and then when they roll to do that skit to do the belly in TikToks, they want to see those nice and clean. So for that maneuver especially, I think that that's a really solid maneuver. It tests the pilot for the skids in orientation and uh, I mean that's a really good one. It makes it a little easier for the judges to, to score which is perfect. Now the next one which is, is called, it's, I think it's the most uh, technical one they have, it's called a Kube. All right, let's see if I can explain this right. I haven't done these, so I don't, I don't know if I can do these. Uh, so let's see if I can do it. So I believe the maneuver begins with a, um, it's a pirouetting loop. So they do a pirouetting loop, and then when they get to the top of the loop, they do a pirouetting flip, and if they entered it, skids down, now they have to exit the pirouetting flip, skids up after they do that pirouetting flip within the loop. So it's a right side up, Pirouetting loop at the top, they piro flip, and now their skids uh, skids into the loop. They come this way, they come around in a uh, quarter turn of a pirouetting funnel, and I believe they do a, a, a pirouetting uh, reversal change after that first loop. So they do a reversal change, and then go into the same thing coming this way now. So it's the skids in pirouetting loop. At the top, they do a pirouetting flip, a one and one half pirouetting flip to come skids down. Now they exit this way. At the exit of the loop, they reverse the direction again. And now they do that pirouetting, uh, it's a wall of death. It's like a quarter of a wall of death. Uh, pirouetting funnel almost sort of turn. They come that way and they do it four times. So it's one loop this way with a turn, one loop this way with a turn, one loop this way with a turn, one loop this way is a turn. That one, I, I, I saw the guys doing them this year at Masters, and it was a really cool looking maneuver. It's a long maneuver, it probably takes a minute to do. But it's a cool looking one. Judges, again, looking at uh, a consistent altitude. In that one, they're probably looking for consistent speed, too. They don't want to see you go real slow, and then real fast around the turns, and real slow. So with that maneuver, since we carry some forward speed, they want to just see a consistent speed the whole time. So that one's pretty cool. Next one was called a Polestar 12, which, was, which is a five-point pirouetting loop, which we call a, a pirouetting globe. Um, a globe is a pirouetting flipping uh, loop, or sorry, sorry, a pirouetting loop, not pirou flipping, pirouetting loop. And so, for instance, we could keep the skids out the whole time. And with the globe, you usually enter in one way, each globe, is, each loop is offset by 45 degrees. So you do one this way. The next one, as you come around in your rotation, you arc it, you, you cock it 45 degrees. You do that one. Next one, we're straight on. Next one, we're this way. And the fifth one, we're exiting the same way we entered. Um, and then with that one, they're doing a pyro reversal at the bottom, at the south pole of every loop. That's a nice looking maneuver. Um, that one's pretty easy to judge if you're sitting there, you know, they want to see those 45 degree offsets when it's coming at you. They want to see it coming right at you. Once again, they want to see, that's a re this is a really good maneuver to judge because you do five loops and at the bottom of each loops, I bet you the judges are sitting there holding a pencil or something looking directly at the bottom of the loop, making sure that the altitude as they come by is exactly the same for each loop that they do. Um, with a pirouetting direction reversal, um, I think you're going to see most guys try to line up the reversal, either nose in or tail in to the judges. It just looks a little bit more clean. Um, and then I, obviously they want the loop to look round. A lot of guys tend to oval loops. They want them to be nice and circular. So that's a cool maneuver too. Cool maneuver. Next one is a TikTok auto. This one, they're really challenging the guy. So it's an auto rotation in a set maneuver, which I think is really cool because I love autos. So they climb up real high. The first thing they have to do in an auto rotation the whole time, they have to hit hold. Uh, they have to come down and make a nice 45 degree approach the whole throughout the whole auto. So that's really cool too. So they begin with a pirouetting flip, let's say left rudder. Then they stop, 
Uh, and then right from there, they have to go to a pirouetting flip with right rudder. Then they have to do two full aileron TikToks. So one, two, followed by a half roll all the way to the ground with an inverted pull out and land nice and soft. That's a cool looking maneuver. I was very surprised at how many guys really struggled through the TikTok auto. Um, that one, I feel like a, a lot of times guys were over pitching it when I was watching at Masters. Um, but for the most part, the guys who were pulling it off, you could tell because it was just a nice, the blade speed maintained uh, the same throughout the whole flight. They had a nice 45 degree line. So that was really cool to watch too. That, that's a nice auto right there. Once again, if you're a judge, you want to see a nice, nice 45 degree approach, same sort of speed, blade speed staying the same. And then on the landing, you want to see a nice smooth landing. You don't want to see five landings on that one. So that one was cool. Last one is called a Hong Kong Eye. Um, which if we're, let's say you're the pilot, it's a, I believe it's entered from a, it can be entered from tick-tocking all across the flight line. And then once you cross the center, it's a pirouetting tick-tock circle. So it's a pirouetting tick-tock vertical circle like this, a vertical loop. And at every quarter, they want you to change it from um, disc in to you to skids in to you. And then it's this way. And then at the top, they flip again. Then it's this way. And then the last one, it skids in. And then I believe they do one more rotation and exit. Um, so once again, that one's good as a judge. You want to look at, uh, is it a circle? Is it an oval like this or is it a circle? Uh, is it the, are the direction changes from um, disc in to skids in exactly at the uh, 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock? That sort of thing is it a consistent speed is a consistent tail speed the whole time so these are just maneuvers that they chose I, f I felt like this year was some of their best set maneuvers just watching them because sometimes the maneuvers get so complicated and muddy that it's really hard to judge that even if you do the maneuver perfectly it's hard to tell if you did it right or not so kudos to uh, masters for that one they came up with some really cool maneuvers um, lastly, to show you a difference between that and XFC, for instance, this year's XFC maneuvers, the first one was very similar to their Polestar 12. It's a pirouetting globe, so like, we, like I showed you earlier with the uh, five pirouetting loops, but instead of reversing at the south pole of every one, we had to reverse at the bottom and the top of the loop. So if you entered left rudder, right rudder, left rudder, right rudder, as you're doing your whole successions of globe. Um, at, at successions of loops. Once again, it's the same sort of thing that the XFC judges look at. Uh, the next one was a rolling Cuban 8 maneuver. This one was really tough actually. This one was tough to learn. Um, you entered from forward flight and it was a rolling loop. So you would do a roll. You'd get to the 5 8 point of the loop and you could either do like a half pirouetting sort of deal to backwards or most guys would just do an elevator flip. So it's a forward roll at the top uh, I would just do an elevator flip to backwards, then you'd continue the roll backwards, and you would do the rest of the roll, the rolling figure eight backwards, then you get back to the top, and you could either do a flip, or some sort of like a half pirouetting maneuver, back to forward, and then you exit. So it's a figure eight sort of maneuver, forwards to backwards. Once again, judges looking for symmetry, consistent speed. They want to see it eights, not squished little tiny loops. And that one kicked everybody's butt. That one, by far, the, the guys who placed in the top three versus the rest of the pack, they, it was a big difference. It was a very big difference. So maneuvers like that really test us sometimes. And that one was pretty good because it was a hard maneuver, but really easy to judge, which is exactly what they want. The last one was a pyro flipping loop. Um, just a consistent pyro flip throughout a vertical loop. At each pirouetting flip, you reverse the rudder. So if it's a pyro flip this way, stop, right rudder. Pyro flip this way, stop, left rudder. And you do the whole thing throughout a loop. So what does this mean for you guys? Well, it's cool to look at. If you can't do these maneuvers, it's really something to, um, to try to push yourself. Take a look at it and try, try these maneuvers out if you, can, if you can manage it. Take a look at the 3D Masters website. We've got that listed below right now. Um, they've got all the set maneuvers listed and they, for the easier maneuvers, they have a simulator that shows you the maneuvers, just kind of how I walked you through them. Um, so some of them are really cool. It's just like a backwards loop, just a backwards flight, simple loop. But 
kind of try to really be precise and be hard on yourself in the point to where you're, you're entering your exit. You want to be at the same level. You want it to be a nice loop. When you're at the top of the loop, it better be centered. So these types of things. So even if you're only doing, if you can do a backwards loop, you can do these sort of maneuvers. Even if you can do a funnel, there's some maneuvers that it's like a funneling funnel, almost like a funneling tornado. Um, they've got all sorts of different maneuvers for all sorts of skill levels and stuff. So try these out. It's really going to help your flying get to a different level. I know for a fact that when I used to practice for 3D Masters and especially doing XFC, um, it really helps trying to learn these maneuvers because it gets your mind thinking in different orientations and gets you thinking spatially this way instead of just a flat uh, two-dimensional line this way. So these maneuvers are really cool to practice and then to watch the pros pull them off it's just always exciting because the, I mean some of these are really hard maneuvers. So take a look at them. That's what they look for in set maneuvers when judges take a look at them. This is what they're doing. Usually they just give a score from 0 to 10 how well you did it. Um, so yeah, that's our set maneuvers here. So give it a shot. They're really cool. They're fun to try. All right, here we are, flight number two. Gonna go over three more maneuvers. The first one is going to be uh, one of the 3D Masters maneuvers, which is called a Sidewinder, it's basically a pyrotic talking circle. You come in, pyrotic talking, and then you bring it around in a circle. That's num maneuver number one. Next is going to be flipping circles. Come in flipping, and then you bring it around in a circle, like so. And then the last circle we're going to work on is a wave. I call these waves. People call them a number of different names, but it's this maneuver. And you do this just around in a circle. Three technical maneuvers. And we're going to go over how to do them precisely or correctly. So, well, let me just check something here. Can't see. Sorry. All right, sorry about that. So for this movie, you want to start by just being able to do pyrotic talking or pyrotic talks across the flight line. You know, be, get good at this. Be able to do them both ways. That this shows that you have complete control of doing this. And then when you start doing that, you can slow the pyro rate down, and you just want to start trying to work it around the circle. And it's really hard to describe what stick inputs you got to do. You, right here, you give a little more, uh, in that point right there, give a little more down and right than usual. Down and right, down and right, down and right. That kind of brings it around the circle. So that's that maneuver. The next one. Same thing for the flipping, you just want to be able to do flips going sideways, be able to do it down and back the flight line, showing you have control of that. And then when you do it, you just got to start feeding in a little bit of aileron. So you would give right and then left when it's inverted, right, left, right, left, and that just brings it around in a circle, like so. And then the third maneuver, you start just by doing these waves, you know. Sorry. My, uh, Sally's not really set up correctly, so. Anyway, so you, when you pull up, you give a little left aileron. Pull up, you can slow it down. Pull left. So this is how you start. Just make it nice and big and slow. And then you can speed it up and feed in a little rudder. Like if you're going backwards here, you give a little left rudder as well. Helps bring the nose around. So those are the, those are the basics of how to do those maneuvers. 
some different variations and things you want to look at would be, uh, or for this one you can do reverse pirouetting. This is very technical and hard to do. You want to watch your altitude. You don't want to be climbing and falling or messing up like that. But yeah, things like that. Next maneuver, you can do reversing. Like I'm tumbling backwards here, or you can switch it to forward, maybe pirouette, reverse it, stuff like that. And then the last maneuver, there's lots of different variations. You can do uh, forward and then switch it to backwards. You can do them pirouetting. Pirouetting wave just consists of a bunch of cyclic stirring. You pull it up and then bring it down. You just do that into a circle. You can reverse pirouette it. And so that's that. Hopefully that helps you guys uh, learn some new technical maneuvers. And we'll just have a little fun here. I got a little battery left, so. Go play with the ditch over here. Whee! All right, what kind of auto do should we do? Tick tocking? Blade stop, I don't do blade stops. Hero flip. And then up. Uh, uh oh. Whee! Oh, I survived. All right. Okay. Hope you guys, uh, I hope that helped and hope you guys enjoyed it. So now that you guys have seen a little bit of what Kyle can do, a little bit of the basic maneuvers in there, learn the history of 3D Masters maneuvers and everything technical and precise, this episode would not be complete if we showed you, if we didn't show you how to put everything together. Um, I feel like sometimes people, some pilots, their flight style is just very, very, very precise and technical. Then when it comes time to do things for crowds or just general public or goof off with your buddies, they kind of lose it if the flight falls flat because it's so much technical and precise that it just kind of gets boring, honestly. But on the other hand, you got pilots who just do smack and just do like little transitions and stuff the whole time, that that gets boring. So like Kyle mentioned, he's a very well-rounded pilot. Um, Bert and I, we try to be as well-rounded as we can. We're nowhere close, but we try to mix it up. Pre precise and smack. So precise technical and smack together with a little bit in between. So this flight, I'm just gonna show you, it'll be a four minute flight with my X7 here. Um, just showing you how to put everything together, just if we were trying to put on a, you know, a little bit of a flight for our buddies or something like that. So we're gonna strive to do precise and technical, some smack and then creative. Always good to put in your own new maneuvers. So I got some things I'm working on here and we'll just see if we can have fun with it. So here we go. So if we're gonna do exciting, precise and smack, I don't know, let's just start off with a, um, I don't know, let's just start off with a cool takeoff. You know, we'll just go right into smack. We'll do a diamond loop takeoff. We'll go right into smack. Here we go. So we can do some smack down here, just some different transitions. You know, nice and low. You know, a, a little bit precise there, like a roll that way. And then we'll do a roll this way. And we'll go back in there precise. We'll roll in the middle. Now we'll do tail down. Now we'll roll it. We'll do tail down back the other way. Trying to keep the same altitude, precision, symmetry. And then we'll change it up. We'll just go, we'll go big here. Just a big loop or something. So we'll do a big loop and make it precise technical, we'll transition to backwards on the back end. And then we'll go into hurricanes, this backwards hurricane. Just backwards hurricane here. And then maybe the second time, or the third time we come around, we'll put it on that arc that I showed you guys earlier. So we'll arc it. So going up, coming down. Going up, and then we'll stop it right in front of us, if you're ready, cameraman. 
Now back into more SmackDown. I don't know, we'll do just, you know, four point flips, left to right. Right to left, my bad. <laughs> and then we'll do them sideways. Little, little quarter flips. And then we'll do a loop in the middle, nose in. And then back out. You know, so it's that sort of thing. And then maybe we'll slow it down with just, uh, I don't know, pirouetting. Pirouetting down the flight line. Maybe we'll reverse it when we get to center. So it's that sort of thing. I don't know, we'll do little flips coming this way. Something back and then we'll do flips that way. Cool, all right, so now I guess it's time we can do some uh, creative original stuff that I've been working on. So we'll do this one, I think you guys have seen it. I call it the pinion. So it's just like a little, a little flipping sort of maneuver. Now we'll change them to nose down, tail down. Now to make it more precise and technical, we'll walk it right to left. Then we'll bring it back and walk it the other way. So that sort of thing, I don't know. Then we'll come in and we'll go exciting. We'll do a stop right in front of us. It'll be like a wall. We'll do it sideways, knife edge. <laughs> that sort of thing. I don't know, pirouetting TikTok. Into a pirouetting flip. And then we'll do, I don't know, some pogos. Back into a pirouetting flip. Then we'll do right side up pogos. You know, some things like that. Once again, trying to mix up precise, technical. And then we'll do this one, like a nose in, figure eight sort of maneuver. Tailgame's a little high, it's making some cool noises today. I don't know. Just goofing off. So that's our goof off sort of flight, good way to put everything together. And we'll do, a, uh, I don't know, we'll do one roll in the auto rotation. So we'll come in level, hit hold, roll it, and then land. Nice and centered and right on us. So that's a good way to mix everything together, just a good way to put everything together that we've learned, precise and technical. We always want to look at different shapes and all that sort of thing. And then just be creative, have fun with original maneuvers, do different things. And uh, yeah, so that's how to put everything together. Cool. So thank you all for watching episode number 28, Technical Flying. Right, Quan? Right, yeah. Did you have fun? Yes, I have fun, and technical is very important. Technical is important. Oh, hold on, I don't think people can hear us. You can keep rolling. Hold on, we need our uh, microphone. This is important, Quan. We need to be able to hear what you're saying. Oh. So put on the blade holder. So you like the, the, te the technical and precise flying? Yeah, technical very important, basic very important before you move on to any advanced move. Yeah, so yeah. but we can do the advanced stuff but make it look precise and technical, can't we? Yes, sir. <laughs> so this is our buddy Quan here, Quan's awesome. We're just at the field hanging out on a normal, uh, what's today, Tuesday? Tuesday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tuesday afternoon here. We'll get some footage of Quan flying today, Mr. Quan Del. But uh, yeah, we had a blast with Kyle hanging out. He really gave us some cool things to look at. He's been helping us out with a lot of things. What do you think of Kyle Dahl flying? Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. He's yeah, but you're the best. Yeah. You're the best. No, 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 no. I, th I thought uh, Chicken Wing's the best. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> He's the best, yeah. He's the best at dirt naps. But anyway, we learned some really cool things. Hopefully, now you guys know how to kind of put everything together, what to really look at. So I stress for you guys to try to push yourself outside the box, not stick with the same thing. Try different things, you know? Right, yes, Quan? Yes, yes. If you learn it forwards, learn it backwards, right? That's right. You had to do it equal on both sides, left, right, up, down, everything. Now, I can't pirouette to the right to save my life. Can you? No, I can, yeah. You can? But, but I can't, have, but you have to learn it. It doesn't come easy. You're more comfortable one way though, right? Uh, yeah, people were comfortable to the right and not to the left, but then people are comfortable to the left but not to the right, but you have to practice both. I'll agree with that. Quan, you're right on today. You're right on. I don't like your, actually, no, your shirt's fine. <laughs> we, we, give, we give him some, some crap about his shirt. No, those guys are fine. So, cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time, episode 29. Uh, yes, we'd like some comments, suggestions. Please email us. Tell us what you'd like to see, what you would like to learn. 
because we're, we're willing to do anything you guys want. So we got a few more episodes for this season, then we'll wrap it up. And uh, yeah, it should be good. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time, Kwan. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs>